that person is the champion, the person that's going to take that thought and implement it. I love that idea. So if you're employed and you, you're taking this approach, if you're unemployed and taking this, re, this approach and you've got that passion for this idea, that's going to become the champion. And what they said and, and what we were talking about here, they didn't have anybody champion that idea. They all sat around the management committee, brainstormed, came up with this, but nobody championed it. That's a great word. Great word. Key thing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, there's a, she, she asked for it. <laughs> what you're talking about, about a year and a half ago, I did something like that. I didn't know there was a name for it. Okay. But um, it got me a meeting with the senior vice president, then a lunch with the president, then we started rolling, we met with HR, and gave action steps and actually implemented the thing that I wanted. But it wasn't, I wasn't looking for a job. I was looking, I was wanting to do this as freelance and okay. it worked. Yeah, I can work for that. By the way, just in, in the spirit of full disclosure here, I have never met Dr. Stewart. <laughs> I have not given her money to say, hey, Dr. Stewart, about three quarters of the way through, would you say, I have not done that. I know you think us authors do stuff like that. This one doesn't. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you call it value proposition. It's just the approach I'm talking about because to the decision makers, they now see you in a different lens. And that's what I'm concerned about for you people that are employed. You may be a great employee. You may be a team player. You may be committed. You may work your rear end off. You probably do, right? But I'm still concerned for you just because of what I heard. Where they're in essence saying, I'm not sure I've got the people to do this. I'm not sure the people on my team can think future, can bring new ideas and have the specific details as to how to do that. They're skeptical about it. There's, but the majority said, I'm open to it. And that's a big change in the marketplace. Terry, who's been a very successful executive recruiter for years can probably tell you how that's a big change over what she heard from hiring authorities as to what they were looking for. She probably didn't hear a lot of fresh thinking. She probably didn't hear a lot of creative disruption. Did you? I don't think so, right? But that is a big change. And some of you are sitting there going, I don't know about this, Gordon. I don't know about this. Maybe the situation isn't exactly like that for you, but I think you're better off in doing that. I think you're better off in thinking like that right now. Even if you don't think you have that situation, because it's going to be easy for you to go back and say, you know, I understood kind of what Gordon was saying, but that's not really my situation here. Ooh, that, that concerns me that you're saying stuff like that. I'd rather you go into it thinking, you know, maybe this is happening here. Maybe I better take a new approach to this whole thing. And even though I've been here for 20 years and get great performance reviews and raises, maybe I better start thinking a little differently because look what has happened in the last couple of years. I mean, I don't think we really understand the impact of what's happened in the last couple of years. I think we're going to look back in 10 years and go, oh my goodness, that was huge. I think this is huge. I think what's going on in the marketplace right now, the economy and everything else, and I'm not going to get into the everything else, is huge. I think it's one of those things in the history, the business history books are going to look back and go, wow, that was a real difficult time, and that really was a significant enough situation that demanded we change. Kind of what I saw is how the companies react is with, with massive layoffs. Right. But you keep cutting, there's eventually no company left. So sooner or later you have to start selling and making money again. Mm -hmm. And so how are you going to do that? Right. And, and that's where I kind of see companies are now. Mm -hmm. So I'll give an example of creative disruption within a company, not unlike what you're talking about. Um, what have I got here? Four or five minutes? Okay. Uh, Larry and I were talking just a little bit ago about the legal profession. 
And, and in fact, in my experience, the professional services profession, whether you're an architect or an engineer or an accountant or a lawyer, really was caught flat-footed by this economic debacle, and I don't know a better term for it. That's what this is, right? Uh, we're really caught flat-footed from a business development standpoint. And I've talked to a number of uh, architect firms who say their business is down 40 or 50 percent. That is huge. You know, it's not 10 percent or 8 percent, it's 40 or 50 percent. And where they were caught flat-footed was, so how are we going to create new business? The ways we have used in the past aren't being effective. And so one of the things I talked to them about is, you know what? You've got resources right now in your company that you don't think about in traditional business development, and you probably shouldn't. But your best lawyers, even your associate lawyers, up-and-coming stars, have key relationships with key people in this market, and you're ignoring it. You know, you want them to do great technical legal work? Of course we want that. But they already have these relationships with people that they sit on committees and boards of directors and they volunteer time with, etc., that could become another tool for you to generate new business. And they haven't thought about that and they probably aren't thinking of themselves as salespeople and they probably don't want to, but they do have some powerful relationships with people. That's what is another example of creative disruption. Fresh thinking. What do I do with my current resources, my current tools, to better utilize them, maybe in a totally different way that's going to help me through this debacle? Time for two more questions. So, to move it along that line, you indicated the CEOs have expressed this to you that this is what I'm looking for. I may not be satisfied with my current management. Right. How many of them have said that they? Actually, that has been communicated down to the people below them. That the people below them actually know that that's what they're Less than 10%. Because <laughs> I asked that question. That was an obvious next question, so thank you for bringing that up. So what are you doing to implement this? What are you doing to communicate this? Isn't it your job as CEO to share the vision of where you see this company going? You need fresh thinking. Right? One, time for one more question. I'm going to ask you in agreement with what Mike said about the CEOs. Right. You've talked to a lot of CEOs. Have you talked to a lot of board members that are not officers of the company? Uh, not as people? many, of course. But in general, what was their opinion? Uh, we think we need to change something within okay. top <laughs> management. That's in essence what they said. If you keep in mind how dramatic this change in marketplace has been, and dramatic changes require dramatic actions, think creative disruption. It's not a bad thing. It's not totally turning the bucket over. It's fresh thinking, new ideas, demonstrate your value proposition. Thank you. Okay, we're going to break for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Um, feel free to interact and meet each other. Um, if you like what Gordon said, which I'm sure everybody did and got a little bit of tidbit from that, we work together and uh, do some uh, executive career coaching, so if you would like to know a little bit more about how we can implement a little bit of what he said, and we do, this is about 10% of the coaching, so it encompasses a lot more in how to direct your search in a more focused way, um, and a very fresh way of thinking, I might add. <laughs> so um, anyway, so if you would like any more information, please see me, and we can talk a little bit off, uh, you know, off on the side about it, and maybe schedule something. In, you know, in the future. So um, break and we'll see you in about 15.